Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Good evening, I'm Ann Emanuel. Today is the 37th year of celebrating Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and our Maggie Hall was out in the community talking to people about the legacy of Dr. King. Part of Martin Luther King Day is educating younger generations about African American history and the legacy of civil rights. An MLK program at 171 Arts Center sought out to do just that. A lot of um, African American culture is not taught in school, so keeping it in the forefront of the, the minds of our young generation helps keep, keep us moving forward. The students, uh, I think that just connecting to them and allowing them to be a part of the conversation it helps them to realize and see how they can have an impact with whatever situations are happening today. Yeah, I mean, for me personally, I mean, we're supposed to be able to take that history and learn from it so we don't make the same mistakes again. Um, but unfortunately, even though there was so much that um, Martin Luther King died for, um, and talked about and protested about. A lot of these things are still happening. Um, and once again, the history, we don't want to lose this, lose this history. It's so important. The Corny Museum of Glass gave families a chance to participate in MLK's Spirit of Servitude with readings and volunteering. Uh, I think kids are really hungry for these conversations and to learn more about things that are happening in their community, things that have happened um, in history, especially around civil injustices. Today, programs across the community were held for Martin Luther King Day, a day of remembrance, a day of education, and a day of celebration. Maggie Hall, Big Fox News, Corning. The Food Bank of the Southern Tier celebrated Martin Luther King Jr. Day by hosting a serve and learn event. Big Fox's Josh Feldberg was at the Food Bank and spoke to some volunteers today. For the first time since 2020, the Food Bank of the Southern Tier hosted their Martin Luther King Day of Service in person. The event features learning workshops and volunteer opportunities at the Food Bank. I'm here at the Food Bank of the Southern Tier. Hundreds of people have signed up today to volunteer in the production room and to learn about food insecurity and the racial wealth gap. MLK Day is a national day of service. Organizations across the country offer volunteer opportunities. Um, we see it as an opportunity for folks who have the day off to come in and learn more about the food bank, to um, come volunteer and then learn more kind of about the back ends and how we operate with our, our network of food pantries, meal sites, and partners throughout the region. And for us, also offering that educational component is really important. The message of Martin Luther King Jr. Day is one that lines up with the beliefs and values of the food bank. Offering the educational workshops is one way the food bank is helping teach people about a problem our country faces every day. We, we've been volunteering here about four and a half years, but especially on Martin Luther Jr., Martin Luther King Jr. Day, that's what he was all about. So if we can continue that work and maybe introduce new volunteers that are coming in, that's why we're here. MLK's message was definitely one of service, but he also had a message around economic justice. So it's not just enough to volunteer and to work in charity. We also need to learn more about the root issues of why people experience food insecurity and poverty. In the spirit of service, the food bank encourages anyone who may be facing food insecurity to reach out or visit their website to find resources that may be able to help. Josh Feldberg, Big Fox News, Elmira. The Department of Labor and the Division of Human Rights have released an updated preventative sexual harassment model for businesses. Every employer in New York State is required to provide employees with sexual harassment prevention training. The model is a guideline for what this training must include. The updated model includes more examples of sexual harassment, bystander intervention methods, and harassment in regards to gender identity. Governor Hochul has removed a 2019 requirement of judges that slightly alters bail reform. Instead of requiring judges to utilize the least restrictive sentence on the defendants, judges will now have more control over setting bail for defendants more likely to reoffend. Scandal plagued Congressman George Santos says he will not resign, despite growing pressure for him to do so. Now there are calls for an investigation that may take that decision out of his control. Lucas Tomlinson has more. 
Democrats in Congress are turning up the heat on newly elected Republican George Santos, filing a complaint against him with the House Ethics Committee. The Speaker of the House indicated that the, uh, he would support an ethics investigation. A New York Times investigation found that Santos fabricated many parts of his background, including his academic and work history and about having Jewish ancestry. The new Republican head of the House Oversight Committee said on Sunday that Santos could be removed from office for another reason. It's not up to me or any other member of Congress uh, to, to determine whether he could be kicked out for lying. And now, if he broke campaign finance laws, then he will be removed from Congress. It's not just the other side of the aisle pushing for Santos to step down. Last week, a group of Republicans from his Long Island district called for him to resign, calling the scandal a distraction and an embarrassment for the party. He cannot serve anymore. He does not deserve that right. He is a stain on the House of Representatives. He's a stain on the 3rd Congressional District. At least six other Republican congressmen from New York have echoed that sentiment. So far, Santos has remained defiant, saying he intends to serve out his full term. I was elected by 142,000 people. Until those same 142,000 people tell me they don't want me, uh, we'll find out in two years. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has said he intends to let the Ethics Committee decide Santos's fate. Lucas Tomlinson, Fox News. High school graduation ceremonies don't usually happen in December, and a 100-year-old person isn't normally receiving a diploma. But those two things happened in Monroe County three days before Christmas. The principal of Spencerport High School presented a diploma to 100-year-old Pearl Newman. Newman grew up in Spencerport but was not able to finish high school because she had to work on her family's farm. She says she always regretted not receiving a diploma. The principal also gave Newman a school ID. Newman will also be included in the display for the class of 2023. Your complete work week forecast is still ahead. Plus this. Renewable energy made from artificial leaves could power the technology of the future. I'm Marianne Rafferty with a look at the devices making hydrogen from air and sunlight. Coming up. Now, your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. After some very mild and rainy conditions through the end of last week, we did step into the weekend with those cooler temperatures. Saturday and Sunday, we held just into those 20s, just touched 30 degrees on Sunday. But we have continued to make some improvements in those temperatures as we had a pretty seasonal and sunny Monday. We had the bright blue sky in store, and hopefully you enjoyed it because we are going to be under a very, very active weather pattern. We're going to see several strong low-pressure systems develop across the continent. United States and it's going to keep us under this active weather pattern and one of those chances will move in as we step into our Tuesday we see that through the overnight we're under some increasing cloud cover we still have or we still have some cooler temperatures but not as cold one due to that cloud cover that will cap off the atmosphere but two you're starting to see that we're strengthening a southerly wind and that's going to bring us a warming trend as we head into our Tuesday forecast however the first few hours of this warming trend temperatures will still be at or below that freezing mark, which is going to bring a freezing rain threat through the region. So a winter weather advisory is in place due to that potential. So what you want to know when we have these winter weather advisories is that hazards on those roadways are a potential. Freezing rain, especially when we've been having some of these warmer temperatures, and sometimes this can be near invisible, can create those significant and almost near instant impacts. So do keep yourself wary, at least from the mid-morning into the early afternoon before those temperatures will be able to climb. So looking at the forecast here, what we see is that through the early overnight, skies are clear. So there's still that potential to drop our temperatures back below that freezing mark approaching the teens. Now where you're going to see that this rainfall line you have over here is associated with a warm front. So that will bring us a warming trend. But as that line of rain moves into this area of cooler temperatures, there's that threat for some freezing rain. Now most of it was either that pinky color or that green color, meaning that we're going to see if it's not freezing 
and rain. It should be mostly rainfall and then temperatures will warm so we won't have any flash freeze threats but we're still going to see that there could be that hour two hours where freezing rain is a possibility quickly creates those slick conditions and then temperatures will hopefully bring us some improvements and then through the rest of the week we'll see some weak disturbances with a stronger system coming again on Thursday. So the freezing rain accumulation is showing some numbers so the possibility is there to see just that thin glare of ice that quickly creates a slick corners, sidewalks, so everybody needs to stay wary. We'll head into then the forecast showing that we do get back into those upper four or lower 40s. So again, if there is that threat, it does gradually diminish as we warm. We'll continue to stay under very mild temperatures then into that Thursday forecast, which again brings the chance for some wintry mixes. We will be mostly rainfall, but there may be some times of some snow to mix in. We'll step into the end of the week and early weekend a little bit quieter, but then another system will approach by the end of the weekend into early next week. You definitely won't find these leaves growing in nature. Marianne Rafferty takes a look at the artificial leaves that scientists say can generate clean, renewable energy from thin air and sunlight. Natural leaves generate oxygen we need to survive. But now, scientists in Switzerland are unveiling new artificial leaves which create hydrogen, a clean, renewable energy source researchers say can be used to heat homes, power transportation, and more. Natural photosynthesis occurs by taking carbon dioxide from the air together with sunlight and produces sugar, effectively storing the sun's light in a chemical form. Well, we wanted to do the same thing, take sunlight and water from the air and store that sunlight energy in the form of hydrogen. The artificial leaf is made from special glass fibers designed to trap moisture in the air. Then, when exposed to sunlight, the technology converts the water vapor into hydrogen. The sun doesn't shine all of the time, so we need a way to store the sunlight uh, for future use. Storing the sunlight in the form of hydrogen is a leading method to do this. Currently, hydrogen is being used to power select cars from brands like Hyundai and Toyota. According to Car and Driver, hydrogen cars in the U.S. are only available in California, the only state with hydrogen fueling stations. This ferry along the west coast of the U.S. and select public buses in the U.K. also run on hydrogen. In the future, researchers hope to see artificial leaf systems harnessing the renewable resource in communities around the world. The artificial leaf technology is still in its infancy. Researchers say their next steps are to increase the efficiency of the leaf's hydrogen production. Gas prices are dropping around the country. AAA says the average price of a gallon of regular gas is around $3.30. Analysts say reasons for lower prices are the better weather and decreasing demand. Prices at the pump are expected to continue to decline heading into February. Inflation and money worries this year might be good reasons to get your taxes done sooner. A survey by Credit Karma says about 30% of taxpayers will rely on refunds to help make ends meet. So here are some steps to get yours back as fast as possible. First, make sure you file electronically. Don't file paper tax forms. Request your refunds be sent by direct deposit. That could save 10 days and review your returns to make sure you don't set off IRS red flags, such as accidentally giving incorrect information. Also, if you claim an earned income or child tax credit, your refunds might not come until mid-February. Good gains during the end of last year have lots of small and medium-sized businesses planning on more hiring. A survey of CEO Confidence by Vistage, a coaching and peer advisory business group, says about 60% of small and medium-sized businesses expect to increase their hiring in 2023. 88% of small and medium-sized businesses also say they're currently offering higher wages to new hires compared to a year ago. 70% also say they plan to increase their prices in the year ahead. It's a fortunate time for some kids, as an excess number of toys has retailers offering major discounts. The toy industry is taking a hit in toy sales. Toy sales declined by 3% from January to September of 2022. That's according to a market research firm. Retailers are now offering discounts as they're stuck with more toys than they can sell. The markdowns are also happening due to shipping delays. 
Stores received needed toys after the 2021 holiday season, which created excess supply levels. Still ahead, is coffee good or bad for you? We'll get the latest opinion from one doctor coming up. A local church in California is giving unhoused people in their community winter supplies amidst harsh weather conditions. Alyssa Harrington has more. Spreading some warmth on a cold day, members of Oakland's Evergreen Missionary Baptist Church held their annual Blanket and Blessing Drive, where they drop off winter supplies to the unhoused community. We have socks, deodorant, some beanies. This year, wet and stormy weather has made their mission more important than ever. The weather this year has been horrendous for the, even us with homes, so to be out here in the elements is a lot. I just want to remind our community that we are better together, so listen, listen, all hands on deck. Bishop L. Lawrence Brandon said they packed more than 100 bags full of clothing, toiletries, and food boxes. Church members offered their unhoused neighbors hot cocoa and warm chili. Many have been staying in tents and are unequipped for the amount of rain, wind and hail the area has experienced during the latest series of storms. We're very concerned about people living outside, especially with the rain and then how cold it has been. And that's why we're going to share a little tenderness with blankets and um, gloves, socks and you name it. At this encampment on West Grand Avenue, people hugged, shook hands and thanked the volunteers. The church also brought along a doctor in case anyone had a minor issue that needed medical attention. Is coffee good or bad for your health? The beverage has received mixed reviews over the years. April Baker looks into coffee consumption and why one doctor in Utah is saying it's adding years to his patients' lives. There's more to a cup of coffee than what meets the eye. Writing these grind, grind settings down and like charting everything is all about the process. When talking with Everett Hamby and Wyatt Henry at Three Pines Coffee in Salt Lake City, they say it's more like a science involving different coffee flavor profiles and extraction methods. It involves a lot of problem solving to create good coffee. But coffee is also proving to be a good remedy for patients with liver diseases. That's what Dr. Richard Gilroy says. He's Intermountain Healthcare's liver transplant medical director. Coffee's our greatest benefits are in alcohol-associated liver disease and also in fatty liver disease. Both cause excess fat to build up in the liver and if left untreated can lead to liver scarring, cancers, and ultimately the need for a liver transplant. Gilroy says Intermountain Healthcare and University of Utah Health Systems saw 119 Utahns need liver transplants last year, a record number. I think what we need to also do is say, let's give everyone a little helping hand in the morning. And that helping hand is in the form of two to three cups of coffee per day, caffeinated or decaf. Also, Gilroy says pay attention to what you put in your coffee. Avoid heavy cream and sugars. Drinking it black is best. But coffee can only do so much to curbing this problem that impacts millions nationwide. What we need to work on, however, in the community is addressing the risk factors, which is obesity, which is continuing to rise. Gilroy says lifestyle changes like eating less and exercising more can make a difference. All while you enjoy that morning cup of joe. Stay with us. We'll have more after the break. We want to leave you with a smile. A man devours nearly 18 bagels in eight minutes at a bagel eating competition in Las Vegas. Members of the Major League Eating Group competed with each other in the first ever Seagulls Bagel Mania eating contest, which was on National Bagel Day. The goal was to eat as many bagels with cream cheese in eight minutes as possible. First place winner Jeffrey Esper came out on top. He set the world record for eating the most bagels within that time limit. $7,500 in cash prizes went to the top competitors. I'm Scott Beadle. Thanks so much for watching.